What's up, guys? It's Nuka here. And Steve here. And we're back with another idle discussion video. And yes, we have a guest today, Tam. Say hello to everyone. Hello. Nice to meet y'all. I'm Tam. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, as you can see, I actually changed the setup a bit. We're surrounded by cherry blossoms. See that? Very fitting today, actually, considering what happened. Uh, Sansa Tokyo. We'll talk about that in a bit. But yeah, I figured since it is the season of Sakura, we can mm. have our little uh, ohanami party, if you will, to uh, do some idle discussion today. But first off, Sam, uh, Tam, since you're our guest here, why don't you talk about uh, what got you into idols and who are your, some of your favorite idols and idol groups? So go ahead. Sure. So I... I'd I, I guess I have always kind of listened, I like listened to it casually before, um, idol music before, just like, you know, growing up and stuff like that. Um, but I would say what like truly got me into the world of Japanese idols was, um, so one time when I was visiting Japan, I was actually in Akihabara Ooh. and I was sitting in a cafe in the plaza and across from this plaza and it was like a super rainy muggy day it was like a terrible mm -hmm. terrible weather but across the plaza i see this long line of people and afterwards i realized like i found a kind of a little bit of like um kind of seeing what they're wearing and like what kind of gear that they were like donning but it was actually that was actually the date of oshima yuko's original graduation concert before it was canceled due to bad weather, oh. but I just, oh, no. yeah, I just, I just saw like the whole line of people there, and again, this was in front of the cafe. It's not even like mm. the, it was, it wasn't like in front of the stadium or anything. It was just like a, the AKB48 cafe. Mm. Um, so I was mm. sitting, I was like, you know, across the plaza from it, and I saw these people wearing like their Yuko gear in the rain, the terrible weather. And I was just like, I need to, like, I, I knew about AKB before, I've watched their videos before, but I was like, I need to, maybe I'll look into them further. I'll listen to their music a bit more. So I thought it was pretty much like the kickoff point um, when I, and I started going back and like watching, like, you know, taking more seriously when I watched, like, I've, you know, I've watched, and as an internet kid, I feel like I've watched like heavy rotation in the past and like some of their other videos, uh. but you know, I, I sat down, I actually took it seriously. I watched it um and i have to and like i have to say my first oshi was matsui jirina who ah. just had her graduation <laughs> concert and we'll mm -hmm. talk about her in a bit so it's perfect mm -hmm. perfect coincidence but mm -hmm. um yeah so she was my first favorite and the same time i got into um nogizaka a bit they released uh kizu itara kata, kata omoi which to this day is still my favorite nogi mm. single but Mm. I think I kind of I followed them a bit at the same time. I was I was more into AKB in the beginning, um, and then I kind of shifted to Nogi a bit more. I would say like maybe twenty fifteen, and then um, Keaki debuted in twenty sixteen. And actually, when when they announced Ke um, Keaki when they were first Torizaka. I actually applied <laughs> to to be a member. I didn't obviously. I didn't, I didn't get in, um, but I could say that I was I was there from the beginning. I even applied to be in the group. But um, yeah, so it's been kind of an up and down ride. I I at one point I kind of I think I would say like in twenty seventeen eighteen I kind of fell out of the J pop scene for a bit. I was kind of more into K. I was there, was I even I guess I was kind of more into K pop for a bit. But um now I think like after our very tumultuous twenty twenty as like a Keki Zaka Sakura Zaka fan, I think I'm I'm sticking with them. I like supporting them. Mm -hmm. The members are great. So yeah, I guess that's a bit of my idol timeline. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, that's really cool, actually. That was mm -hmm. cool to hear you, like, actually applied for, like, Keaki Zaka when they were just starting <laughs> out. That's a really yeah. interesting story. Mm, I definitely agree. I wasn't expecting to hear that mm. <laughs> at all. <laughs> I 
remember the other, like a few, I think sometime last year, because there was like a thread on stage 48 that was like, how did you first discover Sakura Zagasashi Kizaka? Mm -hmm. And I was like, hold on. And I went through my emails and I found like the act, like the original like application email that's like, mm -hmm. that was basically, it was, it was just a message that would say like, your, your application has been um, ex um, not accepted. It's been accepted. And then mm -hmm. we'll message you if you, if you pass like, I guess like the, application and obviously i didn't mm. but it was like it's like a <laughs> special keepsake i could say i have mm -hmm. okay okay so i think jerson just said that he's about to join so i'm gonna stop recording here and we can start <laughs> our discussion once he is in the chat yeah all right so we're back and now we have jerson and michael here joining us now Finally, back on the show now after doing the show with my I know it's been a while since uh, you've done yeah. some discussion videos with us, but we need uh, our gang back actually. <laughs> yeah, our basically, basically. So, so yeah, I guess we'll get yeah. started okay. now. Hmm. We'll start with yeah. our uh, first discussion topic. I guess is it okay if I start so I can get this yeah, uh, out of the way? Go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dreamcatcher recently had uh, their, this is their third overall online concert. It was the two day concert for Crossroads. So first off, I loved the concept of this concert where like where with their recent batch of singles has been the Dystopia series and they ended it off with Road to Utopia. Uh, so they had one day of it, the theme of it was Utopia and the other theme was Dystopia. So during the Utopia concert, they were doing acoustic mixes of a lot of their songs. So it was really nice hearing like some of these more like kind of stripped away, kind of very acoustic rearranged songs. And like there were some that were kind of more like slow rock. There were some that kind of had a jazzy feel to it. Like they did jazz bars. So like that makes sense. So like, uh, like that set list was amazing, but also like the set was so beautiful it was like something like out of alice in wonderland and the girls were wearing these gorgeous dresses they really looked like princesses oh, so oh, that's, that's just amazing. that like the visuals that they have of the set and anything combined with the vocals was amazing so <laughs> that alone made it great but also uh that specific day it was hang dong's birthday one of the members so it's actually the first time she got to celebrate her birthday since she came back to the group because she was away in China for a year and she came back uh, late last year in November, October, November, around that time frame. So it 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 led to this really sweet moment, actually, where like during like the uh, break before the encore, while like the girls were getting changed into their outfits for the encore, which like just their T-shirts and stuff like the merch, wearing the merch and carrying the light sticks their official light sticks so like it had videos of like each of the members giving her like a birthday message and she was talking uh, about like she was getting emotional uh, and trying not to cry but then they played an audio message from her parents in china uh, and so like they had subs so you could like understand what they were saying and then as soon as it started playing because none of the members knew not just hong dong nobody knew that they were going to start playing this before the encore and they just started crying and everyone uh, was comforting so hong dong because she was getting emotional <laughs> hearing her parents voice it was so incredibly sweet so yeah, and then the day after that, the Dystopia concert, where this was more of the very rock-focused song, so this was like the main Dreamcatcher sound, a lot of the really hard-hitting songs. They they performed some songs even, too, that like fans have been wanting to hear for a long time. So like, mm. like in the previous day, they played uh, Silent Night, which is a really popular B-side. They did that during the utopia concert which was amazing but then like in the dystopia concert they did oh what all did they do they did diamond which is one of my favorite b-sides they did uh -huh. in the frozen which is another really popular b-side it's like oh it was just so cool to see and again like the outfits like they started off with like these gold sequin outfits which looked really cool 
And they also had uh, unit performances where the members were split up into three different units and were doing cover songs. All of them were really good, really amazing. Yeah, yeah. What songs did they cover? Um, let's see. Uh, Jiu and Xi'an did a song called Shangri-La by Vix. I believe they're a boy group. Mm. Oh. Um, Dami and Yu Hyun did uh, Baby Don't Stop, which I believe is by NCT U. It's one of the NCT units because they also have mm-hmm. several it's subunits, but it was their song Baby Don't Stop. And it was really cool, especially when like Dami was doing like the rap parts because oh. Dami is an amazing rapper. It's insane. And then uh, Sua, Hangdong, and Gahyun were doing a song called Twinkle, which is sung by three members of Girls' Generation. Oh, oh I know. Girls' Generation. Oh, yeah. So they were flexing their vocals in that song. It was crazy. Like, I mean, Sua was belting these high notes. Hangdong, because she usually does, like, the softer, lower vocals, but, like, she was belting some notes, too, and I was like, that is crazy! Like, I've never heard her <laughs> voice like that. She was like, too good, too good, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, probably the best highlight of the concert was when they did the encore. So I mentioned earlier, like, they had their official light stick, and... So I don't know if you guys have seen their light sticks, but the light sticks are in three parts. So like yeah. you can connect them and you can like change the length of it. So you can like have it like as this long staff, or you can have like just a little short handheld version. Oh, so what, a lightsaber? Oh, it's the really long one. <laughs> it's like a lightsaber. Oh, not well, not not like exactly a like a lightsaber, more like a staff, more like a wizard yeah. staff, basically. Oh, <laughs> yeah, gotcha. okay, yeah. So, but <laughs> basically. They took like, they took like seven or eight parts connecting it, and it was like <laughs> this long. And That's I'm leaning tall. back in my chair. It was like, it was long enough for them to all stand in a line and hold it. It was, it was <laughs> long enough for Sua, main dancer Kimbora, to pole dance on it. <laughs> I yeah. kid you not. She started pole this dancing on it, and I'm like, <laughs> I lost no, it. No. <laughs> I mean, oh, that's, that's just really Sua. Funny. She's just that crazy. But yeah, like that was amazing. The fact that they were able to get oh. it that long <laughs> was yeah. absolutely yeah. insane. I loved that. <laughs> but yeah, overall, oh, just like. <laughs> That's just my face heating up because I'm laughing so much. But yeah, I <laughs> oh, no, yeah. loved both concerts. I really enjoyed them. And also, uh, the day that the concerts happened was just miraculous for me anyways, because the weekend that mm. the concert was, both both days of the concert, was the weekend of my cousin's wedding. So, oh, wow. yeah. Uh. At that point, at that point, we weren't sure whether or not we were going to be able to go. Oh, Michael left. I think Michael dropped. Okay. I, uh... Oh, okay, he's oh, okay. back. He's back. He's back. <laughs> but yeah, so, like, we didn't know whether or not we were going to get to go, so I kind of just bought the tickets on a whim. I bought the... I bought the bundle, so it was, like, both days of the concert, and they came with the VOD. So I was like, if we do end up going and I end up missing either day of the concert or, like, part of the concert on either day, I'll have the VOD so I can watch it later when it Mm -hmm. gets released. But uh, luckily it worked out. Uh, I was able to watch the first day of the concert the morning before we left. And uh, the next day I was able to watch it in the morning, and then the wedding was held in the evening. And it was a really nice wedding. So it just made me really happy, you know, getting oh, just yeah. to spend time with my family again. But yeah, all in all, it was just another great concert. Like, after Seven Spirits, I was like, it's going to be great to see, like, what they're going to do with this. And I think they just, they're, they're always just blow it out of the park. Okay. So, yeah, really, really happy about that. Okay, yeah. All right, Mm -hmm. then, moving on next, uh, Steve. Oh, sorry. Sorry, you had a comment. Go on. I'm curious to watch some of these covers now. You've got some big news, yeah, Steve. 
Yeah, you can probably well, really uh, find them on YouTube, so I'll share those with you later. But yeah, Steve, go on. Okay, so one of the things that I want to talk about is that out of my surprise, Arai Yuki has become a wrestler. Like, I was so shocked to like even hear this, as I'm... I was honestly expecting Jarena to become a wrestler yeah. after graduating. <laughs> yeah. right. So now having <laughs> Yuki do this, it comes as a complete shock. Mm -hmm. Um, got... actually, I've gotten into wrestling like a little bit within like the past month or so, mainly because of Makito when she was, like, debuting in AEW. Um, so I got a little bit interested. So I'm really – I can't wait to see what she does in uh, wrestling. Hmm. Wait, but she, um, she did wrestling before she's doing um, special wrestling? For, like, she Tofu Pro Wrestling. In, yeah, she was For, like, the AKB wrestling. group project. Oh, she was in that. Oh, okay. And then she was also – she did something with – um. Das and uh, Kaori as well. Oh. I think it was like a joke thing on DDT. That's where they had a picture before whenever the article came out announcing that she was going to debut. <laughs> um, so yeah, like she um, like did a speech uh, like on the wrestling mat. Well, I don't know what it's called. The ring. The, the, res the wrestling ring uh, a couple days ago is on uh, the wrestling uh, Toshi <laughs> Oh my god. Just oh. on the Twitter, the the wrestling league's Twitter. Mm. Just a very short. Um then she had like a press conference a week or so ago. Just about her signing and everything. So yeah. Do you have any thoughts on Arayuki joining wrestling? Well, well I have thoughts about that. Uh I'm not gonna say it's like it's amazing she's gonna do she's gonna be involved in sports and also she's also a fellow YouTuber with Shiori too and does TikToks. Mm -hmm. Remember by the way too. That see maybe she'll get she'll get a belt probably when she's re pro wrestling. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> we'll just have oh, to I wait and see. Be... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be cool to see like a um, idol to wrestler pipeline. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like yeah. I think it's I feel like because it, I feel like it's an extension of like idol showmanship and mm. um, sportsmanship in a way. Mm. So I think, yeah. and I mean, I think it's just like they get like similar to when you're an idol, you get to be hyped up by the crowd. You, you still mm. get to like perform in some ways. And I, I mean, at Ayuki, I think, yeah, I, I agree. It's kind of an, it was pretty unexpected. <laughs> But yeah, um, cause I, yeah, as as we've seen with like the tofu um, pro oh. wrestling and like Jerry not just going <laughs> like crazy about over like all the wrestlers on um, like I like, you know I, I follow her on Twitter. I, I mean I don't I don't follow her I don't follow Jerina that closely as much as I used to. Oh. But mm. I feel like a lot of times when I see her on Twitter, she's like retweeting something about wrestling, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm like, Even yeah, when they I made would, the announcement, like she see. was like, "I'm gonna support Yuki. I'll come and cheer for you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope. I mean, I, I do. I think it'd be cool if Jerina like maybe continues to pursue pursue singing, but also uh -huh. if she does wrestling too. I think it'd be. You know, mm. a pop a pop singer wrestler. I think that'd be mm. oh, that'd be fun to follow. <laughs> it just was like kind of yeah. weird because like I just don't imagine like Arayuki having like this kind of like a wrestling aura. If I have to be <laughs> honest, even though like she did uh tofu, um, because some of the characters that they have in that wrestling ring are like kind of like out there, kind of like Maki. So <laughs> like her whole thing, her English stuff mm -hmm. that she does, um. But I just wonder what her gimmick is going to be other than her being in an actual idol group. So I'm Maybe. looking forward to seeing what that is. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe she could I know sing all wrestling. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of something that Maki Ito already does. That's true. Yeah. I know there's a number in, like, uh, m and forties that could possibly be a figure skater in the future. Uh, Chihiro Kawakami he could be a figure skater. I don't follow it and be that much, but I don't oh, follow yeah. either. I mean, figure like, skating in Japan is pretty big, so I mean, That's if big, she does yeah. manage to actually, you know, join the ranks of like you know 
those top skaters, that'd be you know really good for Yizuru her. Yuzuru you know? Hanyu. A legend. I'm also, I'm also thinking of buying. Uh, are we? attempting to probably like do a one month subscription of um the wrestling uh video thing that's up on uh the site that's streaming uh, i think there's like an english stream as well so oh, okay. i'll probably go and check that out even if it doesn't have like any english i'll be perfectly fine just watching just seeing how everything goes with arayuki just to support her hmm. ruka what are your thoughts I mean, again, I'm kind of the same with you guys. It's definitely surprising to hear, but I think it's going to be interesting. You know, having the idea of, like, her being still an idol and, like, pursuing, like, going pro, basically. Like, that's that's definitely going to be interesting to see, like, what's going to happen down the line. So, uh, yeah, I wish her luck. Mm. Mike, do you have any thoughts at all? Honestly, you guys have said everything. Okay. <laughs> very su uh, very mm. surprising. Mm -hmm. Unexpected. Mm. I just hope that like she doesn't get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. It is wrestling is very an exhausting sport. Mm. Mm. So yeah, that's my quick little bit. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So what do we want to move on to next? Uh, so I go next with the topic. Yeah. Hello. Uh. Oh, I guess. Anyway, I guess. About... Yeah. There you go. You're back. You're back. I guess we could hmm. talk about uh, the news regarding uh, Yuki Dean. Yeah. Oh I yeah. Think that'd oh, be you would see the next, the next okay, one. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. I guess. Okay. I'll bring this up. So <laughs> about um. I think it was two weeks ago or a month ago. Um, Yuki Dean uh, said that she was going to expect, or at least she made a video with Watanabe Janosuke saying that something is going to be announced um, like a month later or something around that. And then a month later, we essentially find out that Kashiwagi Yuki is going to be joining all of the WAC groups. All the WAC um, <laughs> For a little bit of time and I was so happy to hear this as obviously you all know I'm a big whack fan so yeah, you like fish a lot oh uh, like I remember with the glasses I was so excited yeah. um so they actually um released a video of Yukinen meeting with um Bish a couple days ago and it was kind of funny to see because um, at first, when I first watched it, it was like, even though like Bish is also really popular and now mainstream, just like there's this, it felt like that there was like this divide between them and Yuki Dean. Like Yuki Dean was somewhat like above them. Because mm -hmm. I know that you watched the video as well, Ruka. Yeah. Did you see this name? I did. It's a, you could tell like most of them were like really nervous, like talking to her. Except for uh, Hayashi Atsume. Yeah. Uh, she seemed she pretty comfortable like talking with her. <laughs> <laughs> then again, Hayashi Atsume is also like 29 in her 30s, around the same age as cool. Yuki Dean. So maybe that had something to do with it. But then again, she's also this very like energetic, crazy, comedic person. So, mm. But I was expecting like, I wasn't expecting like Aina to be like as shy as she was, knowing like Aina's popularity an idol in general hmm. how she just blew up and is one of the like best singers and idol right now hmm. so even oh, like seeing how like she was like a little bit nervous it kind of like surprised me hmm. but Powerful that whole entire power. thing was just so funny to watch hmm. <laughs> yeah. um and then it was announced that yuki Din is actually getting a whack name as well um well, there was a right. whack names yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, you know, like, oh. they're stage names. You know, oh, like, Ina names. the End. You know, she's no, actually not end. called Ina the End. <laughs> no, that's a personal name. No, no, that's no. That's her no, legal no. name. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> but yeah, like, I think, didn't they say it was, like, Yuki... Yuki Reisore. Reisore. Yeah, oh, it right. was based off the Kashua Reisore. <laughs> if I remember, if I was hearing that correctly. Yeah, Kashua Reisore. 
Was it the soccer or yeah. baseball team? Soccer team. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was just so <laughs> funny. Um, previous week before, I forgot to mention, um, the video before meeting of Bish, uh, Watanabe was going through, like, the history of the WAC groups and... A master class. And she's just so shocked, like, all the things, like, the WAC groups have done. <laughs> what? <laughs> that is totally not an AKB image at Yeah, all. no. <laughs> So, this is going to be, I'm really looking at this. Mm. And how it's going to be. It's going to go mainstream, probably. Go ahead, Tim. Um, Me? Did, has has um, Yukirin said that, or has it been said that she reached out to WAC to like start the concurrency, or was it the other way around? Or has No, it, it was the other way around. It was oh, okay. Hmm. I yeah. wanted to start the concurrency. Because he, like, worked on a recent song that Yukirin did. Yeah, can you walk oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, He was the well, actually. producer That's of her new, new single, Can You Walk With Me. And oh, okay. there was talk even way before that about Watanabe wanting to do something with Yukirin. Wow. Oh. And in the music video, so she has was... to go through a wind. What was that, Jerson? In the music video of the song, she had to, like, go through a wind. Yeah, like wind, rain, fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. facing the elements. It was in a whack music video, yeah. It was really good, the music video. I liked it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. essentially, I think this is going to be overall good for Yukiudin because it's breaking her down into something that she's not really as comfortable with, as mm. whack is kind of more dirty. <laughs> so yeah. Experimental. It's going to be interesting to see this new side of her that isn't going to be the typical classic orthodox idol mm-hmm. that we've known you getting to be yeah and obviously this absolutely. will help improve her just not only as an idol but as an artist as well mm-hmm. um she so the next uh group that she's going to be meeting with at least on youtube is uh go to the beds and paradises which is both those groups are split off from gang parade so i'm really looking forward to seeing that video i'm I wonder if it's going to come out in a week, because mm. that's kind of like how, um, first it was like the history, and then a week later it was the Bish video, so I'm kind of mm. expecting yeah. that this next video is probably come in a week. If they're so. like so. doing it at that pace, then yeah. Oh, yeah. So. And then she'll be in singles with them as well, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but I think that she'll be performing with them yeah. eventually, yeah. I believe. You can't wait but for that. What are whack. your thoughts on you kidding them. joining the WAC groups? Probably get a lot of them get cause the WAC groups to get more attention actually. And hey, maybe they could get be the biggest idol group maybe in the future. That would be great for you, Steve. Well, I don't think it's gonna get more attention because they're already popular. Oh so. yeah. Hmm. But it could be uh, to Kohaku. Possibly. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, you had something to say? I thought I heard you try to say something oh. earlier. What? No? He's muted right now. Tim. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Tim. Oh, no, I was, I was, I was wanted to see if Mike wanted to say something. Do you have any opinions on this at all? <laughs> um, I think it's exciting. Um, I, as, 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 you, as you mentioned, I think it's good for you getting to break out of her shell. Um, you know, I, th- I think it's still a bit ambiguous whether, sh- whether, I guess, I-, I I mean, there's some people who say that, you know, contractually, they're not really allowed to stay in AKB past 30. Um, but I mean, if if that is the case, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, that's just like a random theory I've read online. But if oh. that's the case, I think it's good that she's able to kind of, um, I guess, you know, break out of her shell, do some, do something more experimental mm. and if she continues to pursue a solo career at least she has this experience of you know do, doing something unique and you know i mean in i think most people could agree like akb's relevancy in the recent years has you know been declining so yeah. um yeah, being <laughs> so 
I think it's good for Yukirin and I guess by extension with the group to a certain extent for them it's like you know working with WAC who's kind of like I would say the the thing that a lot of people have like the company that a lot of people have their eyes on right now mm-hmm. um yeah. for Yukirin to you know you know take advantage of this opportunity and try something new I think it'll just be good for career longevity so Mm -hmm. I'm all for it and I'm cheering on for her to do well I agree what are your thoughts Mm. like I'm kind of the same way I I do get the feeling that like Yukirin like Yes, you know, like, there is nothing that's saying, like, you know, like, past a certain age, you have to leave the group or anything like that. But I also get the feeling, like, I get that Yukirin, you know, like, wants to stay in AKB for a long time. Right. But she doesn't need to. Mm. Like, I thought that wanted? when I was, like, when I was walking, or when I was watching Can You Walk With Me, and I was hearing her oh. sing this song, and watching her walk through her literal past with, like, the pictures and everything blowing away at her. Oh, I'm like, she she's going to be amazing when she does graduate from AKB and starts her solo career. Mm. Well, not in AKB. Mm. Well, like, I was thinking, like, yeah, she doesn't need to be in AKB to do this. <laughs> so, like... That's true. Getting oh. to see her, like, basically like, out of this safe space within AKB that, like, I feel like she's just, like, stayed in for such a long time now, especially with AKB having, like, stagnated, basically, and slowly declining in terms of, like, popularity and relevance and stuff like that. Seeing her basically Mm -hmm. taking her out of this safe, safe space that she has been in for a good chunk of her life and having her, like, experiment, do something new, challenging her, basically. Because I think, I think that's something, like, a lot of the members of, like, just like AKB or any of the 48 groups in general, it's like, they need to challenge themselves. They need to mm-hmm. get out of this safe zone that they've just stayed yeah, in, yeah. this little bubble, this little comfort zone that mm-hmm. they have stayed in for the longest time. They need to get out of that. Be wild. Be experimental. Don't be afraid to take chances. Even if you do fall flat on your face, you at least say you tried something different. Mm-hmm. That would that would that would that would help for them too. Yeah. I think, I think maybe that's the reason why I've kind of fallen mm-hmm. out with them because I am, you know, checking out more K-pop stuff like that. I think that so is because you know it just feels like they're. You know, they've just stayed within this safe bubble. They've not really done anything that's, like, crazy wild, like, nobody would ever think they would do this. It's like, they've just stayed relatively safe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, I'm kind of... to see to see more chances, basically, of just, not just for Yukirin, but also for the 48 group, if we get to see them do more stuff like that, take members out of their comfort zone... Uh, especially that even regarding like Arayuki we just talked about her getting into pro wrestling that's gonna challenge her that's gonna help her grow so yeah in that regard I I am looking forward to seeing like what exactly sort of craziness Yukirina is gonna get herself into (laughs) and how she's gonna gonna grow as an idol and as a performer and as an artist and as a person there's there's gonna be a lot of potential that is had with this project and how that's going to form Yukirin into uh, this kind of new era, new chapter of her career. I, I think that's going to be very interesting to see unfold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe they could have more concurrency. More, more members can do concurrencies also in WAC groups. That could help too. This will be fun. Mm-hmm. I, 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 don't, I don't know if they would... I don't know if they would take AKB members to to be honest, but I mean, if if like you know, if a is it still AKS? I don't remember the company name. No, like, it's the name. Vernalism. Uh, oh yeah, whatever the V. Blah, 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 blah. Sounds like a Pokemon uh, if name. They, if they just if they just take more notes from Whack, you know, just you know, I think that might be a good place to start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say, right. but I think I think. It's gonna be like variety gold 
in the Yukiri and with the whack group, yeah. I think. Oh, there yeah. Be a lot. I feel like you could grab so many. I feel, I'm just like imagining, I feel like there's going to make a lot of like highlights on like Japanese Twitter, like blowing up and stuff like that. I mean, like, I mean we all know, their, like, we all know that Yukiri is like the OG reaction queen of AKB. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I think it'll, it'll just be a great like juxtaposition. So, uh huh. Works. Do you think that Erica Ekata could do some whack, nope. maybe? Nope. Oh, okay. nope. 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 Okay. She's busy but... focusing on her musical acting career. She's good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, like, I mean, I don't, I don't think S- Sakamichi groups um, really need that at the moment. No. Oh. <laughs> it's more a, It's more 48 groups that need that kind of breaking out of the shell, mm-hmm. if anything. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've already seen some of the reactions that Yuki Dean already has done within Fish <laughs> based on that one video. Ruka, <laughs> yeah, on, uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, she was so, like, what? what's the word I'm trying to look for? Flustered? Flustered and surprised to see, like, the kind of <laughs> things that they say. I'm just, like, how they can loosely say something. Mm. I'm not going to say it, but... It was really funny, like, <laughs> even though, like, at the end of that video, they censored uh, Yukirin doing the call just to try to keep a little bit of this <laughs> traditional pure, I guess, oh. idol and then being, like, a dirty <laughs> idol. Oh. Mm. Mm. I have to watch this later. So, mm-hmm. Mike, do you have anything to say about this or no? Or I had no clue this even happened, so... Oh, okay. Just <laughs> First time I'm hearing it right now, so. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. All right. So there's that. I'm really looking forward to seeing what's to come in these next couple months to deal with this um, partnership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Likewise. Mm -hmm. All right. I guess next. I guess now that we have Michael here, we can move on to next topic. Uh, Takayanagi Akane and Matsui Jurina from SKE both recently had their graduation concerts held at Nippon Gaishi Hall. Big. Mm-hmm. It looks full and I watched it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I watched uh, both of the concerts too. Although I know that Jurina had like, there was a day concert and a night concert, I believe. Yeah. I think I only yeah. watched the night concert. It's a two-part concert, but it's like the long con- I watched, well, both of them, actually. I watched mm-hmm. the entire thing. Yeah. Like, I didn't realize that at first, but then I was like, wait, what are these other performances from? Oh, there was another concert <laughs> entirely. So it mm-hmm. clicked with me there. So yeah, the I, watched, I watched the night concert for Judina's concert, but I did see all of Judy's graduation concert, which I yeah. think it was the one day anyway. Yeah, it was just the one, so, day. one day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we'll start oh, with yeah. that with uh, Akane Matsuri. That's, that's just a cute <laughs> name for wrong. the concert. Akane Matsuri. So yeah, it was very much like a festival, a celebration, basically. Mm-hmm. So it yeah. It didn't feel sad at all. It didn't. <laughs> like, it did even, even Trudy said herself when she was like giving her graduation speech, like, I don't feel sad at all. I just feel happy. Mm. Like even even though there were moments of like you know other members and such like getting emotional, and I think there was a separate point entirely where like Trudy was getting emotional, but like for her actual graduation speech, her like goodbye speech, like towards the end of the concert, is like she wasn't crying. No, no. It just felt like this felt like it felt like less of a goodbye and just more of like this is just a celebration for her. Mm-hmm. As, it, as, it, as I think it should be, because Trudy's accomplished so much while in SKE, you know? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, the, time, yeah. These mm-hmm. 12 years for her need need that, really. And mm-hmm. as a Trudy Yoshi myself, I kind of feel proud that not only did she graduate with a smile, but yeah. it felt like what what the title suggest, suggested, really. It felt like a festival. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 
Like, even the members, like, wearing, like, hoppies with her face on them. Or her dress. Her graduation <laughs> dress. Let's this. talk about that. Her dress was gorgeous. Like, it suited yep. her so well. Mm-hmm. Like, the different styles on it and stuff like that. And even on her mic, the, like, little thing that was, like, kind of shaped like a mm-hmm. bird. Okay, I dropped my back. Yeah, you're back. Yeah. You're back, Jerison. Yeah, yeah. And, like, even her, really like... Awesome. Even her, like, flying away and it had, like, the big bird wings. Which, by the way, by the way, I think, I think Trudy's send-off, I think this is probably one of my favorite graduation (laughs) send-offs of all time. Simply because, you know, she sang her graduation song and, you know, gave her speech and then she went up in the wings and stuff like that up into the (laughs) ceiling. And then they come back down. <laughs> and then they start playing Okie Dokie and she comes back down and I'm like, we're not gonna end it like this. We're gonna end it with Okie Dokie and we're gonna have fun. <laughs> it's not an SK concert without Okie Dokie, to be honest. Like, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> yeah, so like that was that was amazing. Like even the members, like their reactions to it, they were so surprised. It was great. <laughs> And Renna the Toon was in this concert. In that's person. right, that's right, too. Renna actually came to the concert and sang a duet with Chudi, which was really oh, nice yeah. to see because we know that the two of them are, like, really close friends in real life. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And, look, we'll, we'll go ahead and get this out of the way, you know. there's There was a lot of heat about Renna coming to Chudi's graduation concert and singing with her and yet not being at Jordina's and her only sending a video message. Oh, let's no. let's let's get this out of the way. First off, Rena had cleared it up not only in the concert herself but also on social media. That was a last minute thing. That was a last minute decision. It was like 3 days before the concert, they were able to find an opening in her schedule to actually come to the concert and sing with Trudy. And they didn't even rehearse it. So, like, her, like, when she came out and performed with Trudy and they started singing it. Oh, Mike, Michael. We'll see if he comes back. But, like, basically that moment of, like, okay. When she came up on stage, that was the first time they were singing it together. They had no rehearsal for it. It was literally, like, this is just, like, bam, 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 we're doing this. Impromptu. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Basically. I, I... I don't, I don't blame Rena because I, she is like, you know, recent this past year for her has been really busy because okay. ever since she was on the Asadora, like that was the that was huge for her. Right, um, and, right. And, you know, she's 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 blown up. I mean, she's I mean she's she was always like I I you know I mean like I think most people knew that she was gonna be successful in her yeah. post grad career. But Not only as an actress but also as a writer. Like she's writing short stories and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, she's, like, a published author. Right. So, like, I think, like, it's, it's, so, I mean, I think, you know, I don't think Rena is at fault at all for, like, you know, not being able to attend. And, you know, she's really busy. She, Mm. like, you know, she did the Olympic relay. You know, she's, like, she's a busy woman. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I I do. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I do. I I do feel bad for Jirina because I think she, because... I was actually watching, she had a fan sign on YouTube last night. I was watching it last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2, 2, 3 a.m. I actually actually knew about that because uh, one of my friends on Twitter actually Mm -hmm. got a signed photo card from her and they actually like read her comment. She was commenting on the stream and they read it. They read her name and were saying like, hi, I love you. Thank you. It was like, it was such a sweet moment. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so I was I was watching that fan sign, and I think when when the topic of Rena came up, like I think Jaden, I was like, oh, you know, I wish I I wish she could come. So like, mm-hmm. obviously, she was a bit sad about that herself. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, like obviously, I think we, I think there there is like it. I I don't think there's beef, but I just think that there's that like it's just like it's not they're not friends like you know a lot of shippers might have thought they would they're just yeah they're exactly colleagues. they're on good terms but they're not like you know best friends like cheery um, yeah that's and, that's so. what i've always thought of them mm-hmm. as too like yes obviously we we know that like the two of them are like good friends with each other oh, but it's up. like when you compare like rena and judina's relationship to rena and Trudy's, 
like because Rena and Trudy are really close. They're always like talking with yeah. each other and stuff like that. And Michael dropped out again. Sorry about no, that. He dropped you know, I mean, there's also Sayaka and Miyuki. They're still friends, isn't it? Right, right, right. But like, you know, so, just the so beef those- with like some people like going as far as to like saying like, do you not like SKE or something? Something like that, yeah, stuff like no, that happening. It's like, no, we know that yeah. Rena loves SKE, but even she cleared exactly. it up on like a recent Instagram story. It's like, it's not that I don't like the group anymore, that I hate the group. It's just like, I have my own future and my own career to focus on. So I've moved on and have left exactly. the group in the new generation. She's like, you know, I'll what still talk about them if the topic, you know, comes up. But like, I've decided to move on and focus on myself now. So it's not at all that she hates SKE at all. No, she loves SKE. She likes them. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. What about her thoughts on her, the concurrency in Nogizaka 46? Remember she had that concurrency? <laughs> oh yeah, there was that. There was that period of time. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it, oh, I mean, I think I th- I think she en- enjoyed that time. I mean, I don't think it was like really that relevant yeah, yeah. in the long run. But yeah. I mean, I think like from what I've seen, I think she did enjoy it. I mean, it just, it just, it's not like it contributed yeah. to her career. It's more like, it was, I feel like it was, I feel like the Nogizaka concurrency was more of a situation that was like, Nogizaka was up and coming and mm. they could, they used, they mm. like, you know, Rena kind of helped boost them. You know, at that, at that point, Rena was, you know, I feel like she was bigger than, um, like she was, I think she was bigger than like the most popular, I mean, most popular member of Nogi at the time, which was Maya. Um, mm-hmm. like she she was bigger than Mayan at that time. Um, oh. I mean, not necessarily it wasn't as popular as Mayan. Um, oh, no. so it so it, like you know it helped having her in that front row, and I think she did get along well with her members. And I I don't remember exactly, but I think she's like chatted with them before, like via yeah 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 like, Instagram mm-hmm. or interacted with them. So you know it was like it was I remember her, her forming a friendship SKA, with you know. uh Iko Marina. Because Iko Marina yeah. also had a concurrency with AKB. Yeah. And also the two of them are both huge otaku. They love anime and stuff like that. <laughs> so they became friends through that. But yeah, like, getting yeah, back on that. topic <clears throat> with, like, with Jurina and Rena, I always had the feeling that, like, because the two of them always shared the spotlight together, like, always shared the spotlight when they were double Matsui, that they decided, mm-hmm. I feel like it was, like, a personal decision with them that they decided, like, after Rena graduated and she was out of the spotlight, they're like, okay, we're still good friends. We can keep in touch with each other, but we're keeping this friendship, this relationship just on the down low. We don't need paparazzi coming shoving in our faces whenever we're like, you know, just Ugh. hanging out casually. And, you know, we don't need to like bring oh, up every single thing something? we did together. It's like, I think his mic is muted. Wait, my... oh, uh, okay, that's not all data. For oh, the wait, I think he's Drina back. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Jarison, can you give us? Can you wait for Mike to speak? I think he was good. Yeah. Good. Good. Go ahead. Oh, it cut out again. No, I can uh, hear you. Hear you? Oh, you can. For some reason, it's not picking up for me. What did he say? Oh, he's talking right now. Okay, yeah, I can't hear him for whatever reason, but you guys can hear him? Yeah, but I can hear him. Do you have him muted? No, I don't have him muted. It's just not picking up for me. Just relay to me what is it he's saying. Okay, just, just wait for him to finish then. Oh yeah, with the Instagram and her uh, house, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's true. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, so Mike just said that um, basically that Rena like talked, discussed on Instagram that she yeah, was, she 
had she had to make a post about how she, she had the schedule clear up and that's why how she was why she was okay yeah to, i didn't know about she, that yeah and the scheduling too they're all busy exactly exactly but for the record jarina and ren are still friends you can, yeah, you know, continue. I was just, yeah, I was just course. always under the impression that they <clears throat> made the personal decision to like just keep it private. You know, they still like talk to each other occasionally, but knowing like how busy they both are, whenever they do hang out, they just decided to keep it private, like not have it completely on the spotlight all the time. I was just always under that yeah. impression with them. I mean, ask on you, um, still to me. I mean, I, I, I to me, I, I. I mean, I don't think that, I think very rarely do we see idol friendships where they actually hang out outside of work. And I mean, they may have met up outside of work, but honestly, I I don't, I wouldn't even count on that that actually have happened. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I because like considering like Rena being an actress and Judina still being part of SKE and doing all that, they're both incredibly busy. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, I... I, I mean, I don't think that it was a situation where, where they they said that we'll keep the friendship private because I don't think there really was a, a friendship to keep private. I think it was more that they were colleagues that were working together. Mm. Um, and I mean, because I mean, I remember because I remember like after Rena yeah. graduated, there was there were moments when like Jirina would like try to like you know publicly <laughs> tweet at her and um, to you know try to get the conversation going, but. She, I mean, I think, I think it was, I, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's perfectly reasonable for her, for Renata to try to, you know, have this, this thing going on like publicly, but, um, you know, because, you know, she has to focus on her own thing. Right. And, and I'm sure she doesn't want her mentions being harassed by like shippers and whatnot. But, um, mm. I, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't really think that there's much of a friendship there. I think it's more mm. of like a colleague situation. Like and there was obviously think... a bond formed between them. Cause like Judina being the youngest member, like basically yeah. all of the members like had to take care of her. So like, they were all mm -hmm. like her, like big sisters basically. Like and mom. like, of course, the two of them always constantly being together. She did obviously have an attachment to her. Like, we've seen plenty of times, like, Judina just being a baby and, like, clinging to Rena and Rena just being, like, kind of a Cinderella, just kind of like, okay, Judina, like, you know. Okay. You know, like, comforting her and helping her when she needs to, but still, like, serious and strict enough. Yeah, I, I, I just think that, like... I think Rena personally, I think she probably needed space after she graduated. Um, mm. And I think, like, I think Judina obviously still really, really looks up to Rena. Um, no, yeah, obviously. But, oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, I think there's still, like, a mutual appreciation there. And they still respect each other as colleagues. But I think, like, yeah. people um, can't really, ex they, they shouldn't expect, like, you know, some, like, huge, like, shipping moment. Because, again, I think, you know, Rena is extremely busy and successful mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, this, the bond between them is different from than what Rena and Cheery had. So mm -hmm. I think people need to just not compare the two. Yeah. And, I mean, you, you, it was, like, the Milky and Saeko were mentioned, too. But, yeah. I mean, like, when, you know, Milky went, I think, I'm pretty sure Milky went to Saeko's grad con, but. She did, yeah. <laughs> She's not she's not she's not that that busy in comparison to Rena. <laughs> um, considering she, she had to she had to kind of go on that forced hiatus after she graduated from nmb because mm -hmm. I, I think there was some like contractual thing where she was not oh allowed yeah to go yeah i remember that for a year yeah. so i think it kind of put a hindrance on her like her growth post um grad mm -hmm. she i know she i don't know if she's still doing like her she had like her own um, self-produced idol group and like you know she's still doing social media and stuff but oh yeah yeah I, mean, I, I, Rena, well. I actually Rena don't know how much is level. going on with that yeah so like I mean just it's Rena as is a, a level of success that you don't really see from AKB idols and you can't expect her to be giving this time that you see from other grads because she is a top like you know people like her like kawaii and stuff like that they're like you know they're very they're like I, I think like a lot of people think that being an AKB, being a top member in AKB or like any of those 48 groups equals automatic success. 
post grad,、mm -hmm. but I it's not the case. They have to work their ass off to get back to like a lot of times the level of popularity they were while in the group.、Mm -hmm. And you know, Rena has achieved that, and I think that people need to appreciate how far she's gone.、Um, and you know, it's just like you know, she's not she's not going to be able to give as much as maybe other post grads. But I think she, you know, just she still cares about the group a lot. It's it's been mentioned, so yeah. I just I just feel like I had to emphasize she's she is very successful. She is a she is a big celebrity now, so you can't expect. I mean, both Rena and Jarena are big celebrities, actually. Hmm. Yeah. I、Any、mean, I don't think that Jarena is at the same level of, of success as Rena, and and she's not the same level of popularity as she once. I mean, I think AKB in general, the members are not the same popularity、mm. as they once were.、Oh, and Rena is a、uh, Rena is a lot <clears throat> bigger than Jarena right now, and a lot bigger than most of the Forty Eight Group members and the most of the Forty Eight Group grads. Hmm. Thoughts on the、uh, Cherry's graduation concert? Any more thoughts on it? Uh, yeah. I guess going back on topic now, since we got that little tangent out of the way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, really enjoyed Trudy's graduation concert.、Mm -hmm. I think we discussed most of the points with that. So, moving on now、yeah. to Adrena's. Again, I only saw the、wow. uh second day, the night concert, but like some comments that I can make that I have seen from like I think the first concert, like. Uh, she did sentimental、oh, train, and it was with her、yeah. throne that she was sitting on when she won the so thank you. So like that was really so nice. You,、yeah. They, well, I know that they had,、that? I know that they had some members do certain performances. Like I think Mio Maru did Plastic Na Kuchibiru,、oh. which is a Shino da Mariko solo song. Yes. And、uh, I actually really liked this performance.、Uh, Kitagawa Yoshino. <laughs> who is one of my favorite younger generation members? Did、oh, Itoshi San、yeah. no Axel Takashi Minami、oh, solo, uh, and she came、oh, out、yeah. with the freaking katana, and she yeah, was yeah. so bad ass. I loved、yeah. it. Oh good, that was so amazing.、Oh. Uh, I also did see、uh, Jirina performed、uh, Waruki, and there were like these. Pro wrestling dudes came up on stage. Oh yeah, I'm so scared. I was immediately. I haven't seen、wrestling. a video of that performance, only oh, pictures, that、so、but、funny. I want to see a video of this. I have to、oh, look for that later. So, but, oh, oh, there's like, uh, like, like, uh, uh Marikatani. So far, she did the solo song on the. Oh yeah, she did Hanauranai. Marika did Hanauranai. Yeah, you notice on the wall a picture of her when she performed it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I really liked her voice actually when she was performing that. Actually, like we know Marika as being like the very loud, very、uh, annoying, you know, gooey gooey type of character, like always hogging the camera and stuff like that. But like when she's like this more calm, more reserved, and when she's like singing, she has a really nice singing voice. Also, she's really pretty. Like I really liked the、yeah. outfit that she was wearing in that. So yeah, that was a performance that I really really liked. And、okay. I'm guessing、so、I'm guessing I'm guessing it was in the first day that like or no not the first day the first concert first in the first half of the concert that they saw Kurochan in the audience. Yes.、Oh, yeah. He was yes. there. Yeah. Yeah.、Mm. I saw I saw pictures、yeah. of that as well that he was there supporting Judina so that was really nice. So yeah, that's pretty much all I know about the first half of the concert. But I saw all of the second half of the concert and、okay. everything that happened the there. I saw the first half of the concert. During that time as well, they were also wearing a lot of、uh, like graduation clothes during that section. Also, Kano sang a, a song too as well too. It was all good. Oh yeah, I think they did do a lot of like graduation themed songs in that. But yeah, but yeah,、okay. moving on to、uh, like、the、uh, second half、yeah. of the concert. So、oh, about that, Jarena. I was like,、uh, about Jarena. She's actually out of all of us. She's our oceanman in the group. Like my oceanman is Jarena. Your oceanman is <laughs> Jarena, and Steve, your oceanman is Rita, and Tam、yep. too. Yeah, that's right. Tam well, said her I, first oceanman. I don't follow SKE enough. I don't follow SKE enough to say to say have like. Oh, and Michael is actually. I mean, she she was she was my oceanman when I was following them. Oh, oh and Michael's actually. Oh my god! I was gonna ask for his opinion. He'll be back. Too, but... Oh well. Okay. We'll be waiting.、Okay. Move on to the night concert. Yeah, yeah so、yeah. moving on to the night concert. So like, 
Uh, if you read, like, the title of the concert, it said, like, something's going to happen at Judy Knows Graduation Concert. So everyone was kind of like, what's gonna happen, exactly? <laughs> so, like, I think everyone was kind of wondering, like, what exactly was gonna happen. And so what happened, basically, was uh, during one of the MC portions, while it was, like, on break before the next performance, Judy now went backstage and cut her hair short. It was like 15 minutes or something before her next performance. She got it cut short. Which I know some people, like, they say they weren't the biggest fan of it because it was, like, kind of poofy, you know, and stuff like that when, in, you know, she, like, first got it cut. But, I like, personally liked it. I know a lot of people... No, yeah, it. I liked it, too. And I think, it's like, the, the poofiness has kind of settled down to, like, when she was doing... The live stream with like Don Nana, I think her hair looked really good in that. Right. So yeah, I actually really like her short hair. It really suits her. The funny thing is, I didn't yeah. even notice that it happened <laughs> until people said something because I'm used to Jarena having short hair as well. So like, it didn't strike me as anything odd. That I thought I it was just, a wig. No, I just <laughs> it's just I didn't really notice that she cut her hair <laughs> until somebody brought it up. I'm like, oh, right. She cut her hair. Let's see. Uh, what else happened? Oh, Trudy actually appeared in this concert because Judy now also appeared in Trudy's graduation concert and did like uh, Cosmos no Kyoku, I think. And so uh, Judy now and Trudy did uh, Two Roses together on the second, oh, that's so the second half of Judy now's graduation concert. So that was really nice performance to see. Uh then they also did classic SKE 48 songs along, including their second hit single. Which, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, they did a lot. Show. They did a lot of classic, or like older SKE songs. They then brought back the costumes from those from those videos. Actually. Oh yeah, there was like one where it was like all the members were wearing. Oh no, I think that was actually Trudy's graduation concert. They were all wearing an outfit from a different era. I think that like Trudy oh. was a part of. That that was actually a really neat detail. But like, yeah, going back to Judina's, oh, she performed uh, "Cutie Honey" by Kodakumi, and uh, Kodakumi oh. actually noticed and like commented oh. on like her social media. Oh, so like that made Judina really I happy. She tweeted about Judina. Yeah, because Judina oh, loves me. Kodakumi. Like she sang a Kodakumi song for her audition. For like back when she was auditioning for SKE way back when she sang a Kodakumi song. Like she loves Kodakumi. And let's see, sorry Michael, I still can't hear you. So like if I'm talking over you while you're trying to oh, say he something. Hasn't said anything. Oh, he hasn't? Okay. I thought I thought it looked like, like he was trying to say something. Oh. We have a chat, isn't it? Do you have anything to add, Michael? Yeah. He hasn't. No. <laughs> no. No. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I still can't. I don't know what's going on. The tef- technical he difficulties say, he here, but anything. I'm sorry I'll about that. Really. We'll relate to you. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll relate it to you. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what was I gonna say after one that? One of the parts that I liked was um when they started to bring out the DJ. <gasps> oh, um, the I DJ. Initially thought, I initially thought that they were gonna do remix versions. Of those songs, but well, they ended up not doing that, unfortunately. Mm. Okay. Actually, like, the the funny part is like when they started the DJ thing. I'm like, oh, they're just gonna have one of the members be like a pretend DJ. No, they got an actual legit DJ. <laughs> and that DJ is a Drino, is she as well. Oh, okay. I had a feeling, oh, nice. you know, he was wearing a T-shirt, you know, with Judina's face <laughs> on it. So <laughs> I had a feeling he might have been a Judina Oshi. Oh yeah. But yeah, I was really hoping that would have done the remix versions of Uza and Escape. Because oh, immediately yeah. when I saw that the DJ come up, I'm like, they're doing Escape. And then it wasn't the next song after <laughs> Uza, <laughs> but uh, the song after that. I'm just like, yes. <laughs> and that piano, and then, like. And then no, I, I do agree with you I, now that I think I, about I, it. It would have yeah. been cool to hear, mm-hmm. like, a you know remix version of the song rather than having like the dj effects after the end of the song like the brr, 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 air horns at the end of one <laughs> song <laughs> i thought they were going to do the same thing as what they were doing with like the commie stage in akb ah i thought they were going to have like that kind of like, remix to it mm-hmm. 
it's just doing a few bit of the choreography of Uza first. And, like... <laughs> and then when uh, she was performing Akai no Pinheel, um, she brought out some backup dancers. Oh, yeah, there no were a lot dance. of backup dancers. They were all so cool. <laughs> Jarena's thing. Yeah, she has backup dancers when she performs. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> she has a who are you? surprise guest with, was your name Nami J? Nami J, yeah. Nami J. I really enjoyed that mm. that song and that performance that they both did together. Yeah. It's like she came out of nowhere. Like, I didn't even realize that she was there. I yeah, me saw, neither. Like, the but yeah, that was awesome. Oh, also in the first half of the concert, they also did uh, the, the the Hearts Placard too. And then when at the end, oh, when that's Judah right. Holds a placard, she said she she misses Mayu. Well, it's the mouse sign. Uh, oh, yeah, she right. was like, I miss Nezumi, which of course Nezumi was Mayu's character in Majiska Gakuen. Which again, the right. two of them were close because like they did do that and they kind of got closer together because like Center and Nezumi. So that was actually a really cute moment. That was really, really sweet. I was surprised when that happened. And mm. Yeah, they did that. It was great. But yeah, speaking of, also with special guests, uh, almost all of the first generation members from SKE48 oh, so came back during Tsuyoki Monoyo. It was like during the second verse, they all came out and started singing with all the members. Not just Jarena, like, all the other SKE members were there, and they were dancing, and all the first-gen members were, like, just singing at the center of the stage. That was amazing. I agree. hmm And, of course, obviously, like, not just Matsuri Rena, but also Oya Masana was busy, so she couldn't come to the concert as well. But, like, just seeing all of those members come together... Like, you could totally Even, see uh, why, like, Fukushinao got so emotional when she was seeing them and when she was uh-huh. facing them. It was, like, just seeing this entire generation, like, the pioneer generation of this group all standing here. <laughs> but you can also- feel, like, the difference between the senpai and then the current members now. Like, you can feel the atmosphere is totally different surrounding them. Right, right. While watching that live. Like, I mean, especially from, like, like Kuwabara Mitsuki, because they highlighted her a lot. Like, you just felt that power coming from her. Also, and like, Minami Takashi... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, like, obviously as well, because, like, now a lot of the members are older, and, like, now a lot of them have, like, grown up, moved on, like, with their own careers. Some of them have gotten married. Mieko was pregnant on stage. <laughs> She's gonna be a mom. She... She was pregnant on stage, and it didn't feel like they changed at all, honestly. <laughs> uh, like, even the members, like, even Julian said herself, it's like, in a good way, it feels like you haven't changed at all. So, like, that was just really oh, sweet to yeah. see them, like, just all talking with each other again. Uh, yeah. Seeing something Almost like that. Because, like, I didn't oh. follow SK since the beginning, but, like, I had known about, like, all a lot of these older members. So, like, kind of, yeah. just seeing that again, seeing that reunion was just really nice. And then later mm-hmm. on as well, after that, uh, Sato Sumire, another former AKB slash SKE yeah. member, also came out. She was also pregnant. Yeah, she was eight months pregnant. Yeah, eight months oh, pregnant. And she came out <laughs> came out to, like, congratulate Judina. And then they did all the video messages of, like, all all the members from, like, there were members from, like, the international groups like Team SH, Team oh, TP, yeah. MNL. BNK. Yeah, BNK, uh, CGM mm-hmm. as well. So, like, Izurina CGM, was Izurina. there as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, like, uh, Takamina and Kojiharu did a message yeah. together. Uh, Masana mm-hmm. and Rena, oh, who it's, couldn't it's be the there. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mia Zawasaya, Mia Zawasaya. Oh. And, oh and, 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 and to top it all off, mm-hmm. Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega. I saw that. That was amazing. <laughs> yes. it's like, that yeah. was, I was not expecting that, but that's why um, this was before even uh, Arayuki announced her wrestling stuff. I'm like, okay, let's have Jarena go back into wrestling after graduation. <laughs> Kenny Omega's like, let's meet in the ring. I was like, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Was saying, uh, that. That's good. But uh... like, 
I thought it was such like a great sentiment to do that as mm-hmm. Jarena not only is like the last person in SKE, but she's also one of the most senior members in all of the 48 groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I remember oh. correctly, I think that she was like the fifth senior that was still active oh. at this time. Because mm. oh. there was only Yikirin, uh, Oya Shizuka, Miho, <laughs> and I think one other person. Miho's still in the group? Yeah. Miho? Yeah, Miho! I, I thought she graduated. She's still there. <laughs> but like... Wow. Oh, Yui-han? <clears throat> no. She... Oh. No, Yui-han came after, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. But it, like, it was just so great to see like all the sentiment with all the international groups um mm-hmm. they had uh japanese subs for all the international groups but then mm-hmm. the thing that really surprised me is when it was going to like koji haru and takamina and kenny omega and all of them and oyamasan and rena that they had english subtitles oh, that's for those mm-hmm. videos yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But the con- even at the concert they when they show the names of the members they put them in english instead of just both Japanese and English. Well, those mm. were Jarena's. For Churi's concert, it was in Japanese. Oh, mm. oh, Japanese too, for sure. No. So you can definitely see, like, the international influence that Jarena has had. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was seeing the behind-the-scenes photos with the first gens, and I was like, this is so nostalgic. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I still haven't, I still haven't, I've only mm-hmm. watched the digests for both concerts. I was busy this week. Also, speaking of those behind the scenes stuff of like the first gen members, what I find really funny, there was a video that I think Mizuki posted on her social media. They had USA apologize for not coming through on like the, uh, it was the special stage for like all the graduated members to come. Mm. Like it was like for an anniversary oh. thing. They said like we're gonna have an alumni stage. Basically, that's the word Aww. I was looking for, an alumni stage. And they never went through on that. So when they saw USA, they had him apologize. <laughs> so it was like, sorry. <laughs> it it was really um, funny and really cute. One thing that I mean, it's just this is kind of like off topic. I mean, it's on topic, but um, one thing that I so I saw someone post on my timeline, which I kind of was kind of surprised me, um, was that apparently Akipi didn't attend this concert, which I oh. thought was. Hmm. Which I was, I thought, I mean, I thought it's a bit disappointing considering maybe I feel like of, he, pen, of the coronavirus pandemic, maybe wants to stay safe. Yeah, it's, it's possible it's because of that, but I feel like it's a bit disappointing mm-hmm. considering like how um, Jerry now is like, you know, I, I feel like she, I think she's one of the members that looks up to him a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. like, you know, he she was one of like the youngest members that he pushed, so. That's a, that's a bit on. That's a bit of a sad note because I think he he does generally attend um these concerts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But maybe I mean hopefully he, you know hopefully he sent her a message maybe personally or something. But mm-hmm. that that was kind of an unexpected um thing that happened. That that's actually another thing too oh, with like Shino da Mariko because we know like the two of them oh, were yeah. close and like yeah. Mariko was kind of a mom. Like, mm. I think I think what Steve had explained to me and kind of clear that was like they yeah. had filmed a video. Yeah, they filmed a video. They but filmed they a didn't, video. They didn't have to show it. <laughs> oh no! So no, it was like a what? They filmed a, like a congratulations video from Mariko Sama. Oh but really? They forgot yeah. to show it. In the oh concert. no! Oh man! How could you do that to Mariko? <laughs> they forgot to show it. <laughs> I can. I was just remembering everybody in one of the other discords. They're like, um, "Where's the Mariko video?" <laughs> right. Because everybody was expecting to see it, mm. and then later on after the it, concert, it's like explained, "Yeah, they just forgot to show it." <laughs> or Blu-ray, maybe. Um, was is I is is Mariko pregnant? I feel, I feel like she had, a child. she had a child. She has one daughter. Oh, okay, she had a child. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, her child's one that year that old that. already. Yeah, one oh, year yeah. old. <laughs> and showed her him on Congrats YouTube as well. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's adorable. Oh. She's a blog mom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. All the time on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Going back to the concert, like one of the most heartfelt and memorable like performances in the concert was um Jarena's uh, performance with Mikiti. <gasps> yeah, Mikiti. that's right. Because oh, they performed Bukio Tayo. 
That was so sweet. Acoustic version. The acoustic oh, version. Oh, so yeah. good. It was really, really good. Because I think that we brought up in the past, I don't know what video, but Meekty's the one that has survived breast cancer. So yeah. This, oh, yeah. yeah. So it, that even made it even more like emotional seeing mm-hmm. her there performing with Jarena. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and then after that, when we were getting to the encore, we had, uh, of course, we had Jirina performing Kamigami no Ryohiki by herself. So you saw her get really emotional and kind of choke up, like, in the middle of, like, the first verse of the song. But she was able to sing through it. And then Mizuki and Nishishi came out and they all did Glory Days, the original three, the original three from that unit, oh, yeah. performing Glory Days together was so awesome mm-hmm. like it's like again kind of like we were saying earlier it still felt like they had the same energy as before yeah so yeah that was yeah. really cool to see and then of course we had Junina coming out in her dress we're gonna call oh, it a dress yeah. <laughs> dress <laughs> performing so her scary. solo song and then like giving her speech before walking out so not this one <laughs> no because yeah that was actually the thing like i remembered her wearing that dress like for uh the music video of her graduation song and right. also she wore it on like uh jay mellow i think or something yeah, like that some yeah. some show that they like performed on where it was like a special for her graduation and she performed that song so i was like why didn't they just have her wear that dress now, to be fair, to be completely honest, I don't hate the dress as aggressively as some people do, because there are some people that are just outright disgusted by it. Like, I don't hate I don't the dress. Like I don't hate it, but I also <laughs> agree that it's, like, not the best. Although there was one there was one person in my group chat that pointed out something that I think if they did this, if they like did this differently, I think it actually would have looked really better. So what they said basically was they could have changed the dress color from green to white and given her like a golden leaf crown, basically like a golden flower leaf crown on her head. Kind of like, you know, like you see Greek goddesses wear and stuff like that. You know what I'm talking about? Like the golden leaves, like metal, like kind of crown around Mm -hmm. her head. Mm -hmm. Like, I could have seen them possibly doing that or maybe something that wasn't, like... Because, like, green is obviously, like, one of her colors, green and orange. So, like, in yeah. that in like that aspect, I think it did look nice as, like, her kind of standing out against all the other members wearing orange. It was, like, kind of a nice contrast, like, the orange, all the other members wearing orange mm. outfits and her being, like, at the center as in this green dress. It's like, I don't know, if they had either, like, styled it different or did something different with it, I think it could have looked really nice. So, like, not the worst, in my opinion, but not the best. I think they could have, like, improved the design a little bit. But, again, like, we don't know, we really don't know how much the members have a say on, like, what kind of dress they want to wear for their graduation. You know, like, we don't know. There might be some members who have a bit more say in what they want to wear and maybe some that don't. So, like, if if Jirina said that she wanted to wear this kind of dress, then more power to her. Mm -hmm. But either way, like... I mean, that's true. That's true, too. She does like the color green. But, yeah. And then, Um, uh, after... Sorry, go on. Uh, and as I said, you mentioned like it's not the worst, but it's not the best. Would what would I mean? I guess af- after after you're done um, with that, what would you say was is like an example of like the best grad con outfit and the worst grad con outfit to you? But I'll let you finish what you were saying. <laughs> well, in that regard, <laughs> I mean, I I don't really know. Like again, I don't remember all the graduation dresses by memory, so like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I guess it's you. I guess it's kind of hard to say. I don't really think there has been like a necessarily like I would consider like the worst dress because like in general like all of the graduation dresses for like previous like top tier members have been great. 
Mm-hmm. I I don't know. I really don't think there has been a worst per se. Okay. But like Judina's right. isn't the best. Honestly, okay. for, I I don't me, know. I don't know. <laughs> you go on, Steve. Honestly, for me, it was probably the worst that I've seen for a graduation. <laughs> I'm sorry, mm, like, honest, I was expecting, honest. like, a lot more from it, or just even having, like, her dress that she was wearing in her music mm-hmm. video in J Mello, like, that's mm-hmm. something that I was expecting to see, not this, yeah. like, at first, no, when I first like... saw it, I'm like, okay, I'm guessing they're going with, like, this kind of queen kind of aesthetic, but then, like, mm-hmm. after, like, a song or two, it was kind of like, okay, this doesn't look <laughs> that good at all. It got to the point where people were, like, making memes of her dress because <laughs> people did not like it at all. Mm. I'm the same way. Um, By the way, Mike before said that he doesn't mind the outfit dress. Like, he doesn't mind it. Mm. Um, And he was going along with the same with you, like, if... Because uh, I remember talking to him before, um, saying that if it was her choice then it was her choice as long as things that like you said mm. before but right. like i just wish they would have done something better i was hoping of like something with more of, like a fluffy dress that had both like an orange and green kind of like fade to it yeah mm, yeah that would have been nice yeah. no or, or even like colors. or even like mix some red into it because we know red has also been like a prominent color with her cuz like a kai pin heel for example is like <laughs> Kind of like, kind of tied the color red to her, and even an ikinari punchline. Even though she didn't right. participate in that much, like all the outfits for that were red. Right, mm. and she wore pants. That's right. She was in a suit, a sparkly suit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like the pants was very jeery. And I, like, I, I was trying to, I was, I was trying to look this up because I, I, I for some reason I remember I was like thinking like, oh yeah, Miyazawa size graduation dress was the worst. So oh, I had to look it up. Purple. For some reason, I just like, had that in my memory. It's the worst. But it's, it's not that bad. I don't know why I thought no, it was No, I worst, love but... her dress. You stop. I, for some reason, I remembered it being bad, but now I'm looking at it. I'm like, this is perfectly fine. It's very, it's very style like. So I was like, I don't know why I remembered it being bad. but No, exactly. Yeah, like... I think, yeah. It's, it's, it's very Judina, but it could have been done better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, why, I, that's I, why I was kind of saying. It like not being the best but not being the worst like I was saying it more relatively I don't think there's ever been like a graduation dress that I would consider the worst because like all mm. the dresses are pretty much made to suit that member that member specifically yeah. it's like it suits yeah. them flowers mm-hmm. but also with Akari she does graduation concert and her graduation concert goodbye pink goodbye idol it's a bit well. It's a, actually a very big uh, graduation dress where it even almost filled the the arena. Yeah. Mm. You saw that concert. Yeah. Mm. But Sayaka's Yamo's graduation concert dress is also great too. Very mm. sparkly, a lot of colorful. Yeah. An- another one I ha- I remembered was um, Koji Haru's. I mean, this wasn't her like the big final graduation dress. But right. She had, like, right. A shirt on that said Matsuri and had like the little. Nyan Nyan cats on it, but <laughs> I think her her very final one was was one with actual roses on it. I'm like just wearing my little shitty. Yeah, um, yeah. But, like that one was a nice one, but like if 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 her real graduation outfit was a t-shirt, I would be like that's the worst. But it wasn't that one. Right. So. That I mean, Koji Haru's graduation like send off. Uh, going off topic a bit, but that's another one that I find really hilarious because like she ran out of the arena and like went into a limousine. Oh. <laughs> that that was amazing. <laughs> I think that was like I think I'd have to rank that as the the best graduation <laughs> concert because it was it was very much a Koji Matsuri like it was a festival it was fun yeah yeah. You know, I should watch that concert. You can watch it on AKB48 Ezo. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember still Akimoto Sayaka coming down and singing Mushino Ballad, and then at the end being like Nyan Nyan Omerito. <laughs> Like that <laughs> that was really cute. That was really cute because we know that they both love and support each other. It's really cute, their friendship. Okay, but yeah, going back now, going back, yeah, reeling back. So after That's all that and after Judina had left and the members like sent her off, 
they had all the SKE members sing a new song that Jirina wrote uh, for them, actually, called uh, Orange no Basu, or Orange Bus. Mm. So, like, I really liked the lyrics to that when I was listening to it, because it was really relating to, like, I would say not just Jirina's path with her career as being part of SKE, but also just the whole entire group. Like, I feel like all the members could relate mm. to this song in some way because it was talking about like oh we've seen people like come on this bus or like get off this bus so it's like old people that we've like known for a long time leaving and new people coming in sharing in a lot of painful memories but also happy memories and stuff like that oh yeah the and bus. then and then at the end going out and like finding new colors in the world outside of the orange bus basically Oh, yeah. mm. oh, related with buses, but I know in Jirina, mm. the uh, poster of Jirina in the election, AKB48's general election in 2018, she, she was actually in a bus stop. Yeah, she was in the bus stop. And also, like, I remember when, like, the SKE cafe was still open, like, they had, like, an orange bus, I think, like, at the cafe that I think I had the uh, members' uh, autographs on it and stuff like that. Yeah. Before I actually closed, actually, mm -hmm. in person. Mm -hmm. I did, yeah. So like I think I think Jirina, she wrote it as a really fitting song for like just talking about not just her own experience but like for the entire group. It was just a really really nice song. It was a really nice gift I felt like for them. And we still have potential because of with the newer members actually. Hey, maybe they'll make music for a long, very long time still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because in these concerts, she also <laughs> showcased also the uh, the possibly the future the future of the group. Especially right. 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 Oh yeah, that's right. Because the current youngest member of the group is Hayashi Mire. I think she's like twelve or something. Yeah, <laughs> twelve or thirteen, oh, somewhere around that. Yeah. Somewhere around that age. Yeah. But yeah, I was joking around that this member is younger than my dog. <laughs> 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 which i think is like hysterical I'm like you know my dog's name is toto and i'm like you know if you worked harder you could have been an sk member too but um <laughs> <laughs> when that, when i was when i was watching the, the digest i have to say like the energy of them of the younger members it's like it's it's there like oh um, yeah you know if, if they you know if they um if like management plays their cards right they're they're definitely stars in the group that could shine. oh yeah Oh, important so to point it out, does, Hiyuka, it does make, um... hmm? oh, still on hiatus still, Hiyuka. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah, I think that they that they have, like, you know, SKE has very promising future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I would, for a while, like, the past year, I would, I, would, I would have been saying that NMB was, like, probably the most promising, but... I think like after seeing a, um SK8 perform I think mm. I'm I'm convinced that they could they could like those members could do they they could really put on this show. Mm -hmm. I mean, all so. the members in all the groups have potential. I know STU 48 is also promising too as well actually. Mm -hmm. I guess before yeah. we next up we before we go on to the next topic I actually do want to bring this up because this was pretty recently announced and it's related to SK actually. Yeah. So uh for the sixth generation members, actually, it was actually announced they're holding another concert at uh, Zep Nagoya, and it's going to be mm. on May the 18th. And this will actually be one of the last concerts before Takeuchi Saki graduates from the group because she's graduating soon. Oh. And like, it was actually really nice because, like, even in like Trudy and Judina's graduation concerts, they were like doing something for Saki. So like during like one of the uh during one of the performances in Trudy's graduation concert that I think was with the sixth generation or something like that, it was like they were all waving like the pink pen lights, which like it's her color pen light. And then like uh when it was the angel units in Judina's graduation concert, Saki was like the uh center angel for one of the songs, I think. Or something like that. So it was something related to that. But yeah, they were all doing something for Saki because she's also graduating from the group. So I'm mm. actually really happy about that, that the sixth generation 
because they're all they all have such a close bond with each other. They're all really good friends. So I'm really happy that they're gonna get not just another concert for just themselves and Zep Nagoya, but it's also gonna be kind of one of the last things that Saki does before she leaves the group. So yeah, really happy about that. But yeah, anyways. There was that black, remember that in the single, there's the Black Pearl check, Change Your World? Oh, yeah, that. yeah, that's right. Yeah. All yeah. right, so. You wrote it too as well. Hmm. So, yes, moving on next, we're going to talk about uh, Sakura Zaka, 46, who were recently on Songs of Tokyo, which is a program oh, yeah, on uh, NHK broadcasting. So that aired actually NHK earlier Network. this morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Tara and and, and Carl with Sakuzaka Central hyped it up with the tweets. Oh yeah, that's right. There was like a like a tweet trend going on for like a hashtag for like to support the group. So uh I actually watched this uh during the live broadcast. Uh how many of how many of you watched? I know Steve didn't watch it because he was asleep. Yep. I need to watch it on demand on any world on demand. You're and Costco uh, when you watch it. Wait, Mike said Mike you watch it because he was at Costco. Oh, oh he was at Costco. <laughs> oh, right, right. He said he was out with his family, but I was talking to it with him because, um, because in one of the segments of the show, they were like having showing international fans talking about, uh, why they love the group or why they love certain members, and I saw <laughs> someone who looked exactly like Michael, and Wait, I was you, convinced. You I was like, hold on, is that Michael? So, like, I messaged him about it, and he was like, no, that's my cousin. Sure. But I swear, his cousin looks exactly wait. like him. It's insane. Wait, wait Mike, wait, what are you saying? Mike, you said something? It wasn't him. <laughs> yeah, he had to clarify with you that it wasn't, it wasn't him. Yeah. <laughs> It was his cousin, but, like, they look alike, and even their names are alike. Because, like, when it showed her name, it was, like, Michaela. But, yeah, like, it showed a comment oh. with her. He, she was talking about uh, Morita Hikaru. Right. Oh, mm. he, that's a big accomplishment. Okay. But, yeah, I just, I just got really confused for a second, because when I saw him, I was <laughs> like, is that Michael? But then he clarified it with me. Well, oh, I see. So, oh, yeah. yeah. No, but yeah, they performed uh, all of the three songs from uh, their latest single. So, Ban, Guzen no Kotae, and Omota Yorimo Samishikunai. So, they did that. And they also did Nobody's Fault at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Nobody's Fault. And then, like, the MC is, like, interviewing the members and talking with them. There was this really funny segment where it was, like, the MCs were trying to be like, oh, aren't you mad that you're, like, not the center or anything? But all the members were like, no, we're really happy yeah. for these girls. We want to support them. And he was just like, y'all are so nice. <laughs> y'all are so oh, yeah. humble. So, yeah, just all, all in all, it was just funny. really nice to see. So, yeah, it was awesome getting to see them on the show and getting to see, like, basically like other like international fans talking about like why they love the group so much so yeah awesome for them shows they we they have international fans yeah mm -hmm. so far doing great the single just number one did very well got the single mm -hmm. but i'll get it in the next next week this week yeah so um like the sakura zeka central like it's you know it's it's a group of us so when we like one of one of our staff members uh, they actually were interviewed i don't know if they, i don't think they made it onto the show but um you know so we had the heads up for for a while that th that this that this was going to happen so we decided to like you know it's it's a, it's like a good time to try to bring attention to the international fans which is why we came up with the bloom sakura zaka hashtag and we wanted to make sure it was in english so you know, they would know that it's from international fans as well. So mm -hmm. I saw like a lot of like really nice fan art and cover songs and even dances um, mm -hmm. and like, you know, people showing off their collection. Like, you know, it's it's not cheap to import all of this from overseas, mm -hmm. but you still see so many people who are able to have their little shrines and collections. And I think that's very sweet. <laughs> um, also, of course, the performances were 
very good as usual, as you expect from Saka to Zaka. The camera work was really good. I could actually, like, it's sometimes like the like music shows are a bit mixed of a make it a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to the Japanese ones. Sometimes it's very stable and good. Sometimes, oh, it's, and but this one was songs. the case. Hmm? And, they, and, they, and they did full songs as well because NHK. Yeah, so it was you know very stable camera work. You got to actually see like a lot of the members that you don't see um, on the TV mm-hmm. on like the regular broadcast performances. Um, overall, it was really nice. Um, I, I, you know, the interviews with um, with the fans was they were they were all really good as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought there was there was one from like this a uh, um, girl named Camille, which I thought was really nice. It, it was before the Guzen Nokotai performance, and right. she was talking about like how she had the experience of confessing to another girl as well, like Karin had in the music video. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, it like really resonated with her, and I thought that was I thought that was really, I thought that was like a really, and I I kind of like I I kind of teared up when I was like hearing her speak about it because you could tell it's a very, it was a very personal moment for her. Mm-hmm. I mean, they uh, were passionate and fierce in that music video. Yeah, and um, also I I don't know if you guys know him, but Anthony as well like anthony from twitter he spoke about a bit about um, oh that was him yeah oh i didn't he realize it how, <laughs> he, he spoke about how he, like you know like fall like the group helped him i mean i think it it's been like a, a he's been having to he battled with leukemia and like you know sakura zaka slash kiki zaka is one of the groups that helped him stay strong and there was like a there was um oh i, I forgot her name but there was things there was um a girl from Mal- Malaysia, I believe, and she talked about how it helped her um, overcome her mental, like the lyrics, like really resonated her and helped her, uh, you know, deal with her mental health. And I thought that was, you know, that was, that was like, you know, it's all like all so many touching stories. I was like, you know, it's very, you're very proud to be a fan when you, when you could hear that mm-hmm. the group could touch so many people in like such profound ways. Mm-hmm. And, um, I think even the MCs were like, you know, we've never had like this kind of range of like deep stories before. <laughs> I don't know if you, if you caught that portion, but like, yeah, like, I caught that. Like, is this like an is this like an idol? It's like, like is this an idol group? Like these stories are so like profound. <laughs> I mean, the same if if they were still Kefizaka, for instance, they would probably have the same stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they did, they did a few times actually. Uh, like the, I, I just said if, if they did Songs of Tokyo's Keiki. Uh, actually, yeah, they, 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 did they did one. They did one. They did, oh, yeah, right. they had been yeah. on there before, I feel like. Yeah, oh, okay. as well. yeah I saw, I remember Hinata Zaka, but I don't remember about Keiki. But... Oh, yeah. Bono Clover Perfume, too. Saw too. I thought it was, I, I, I was, I was happy, and it, I, got, I got to watch it with my, my mom, so it was like a nice, oh. it's a nice thing to, I mean, it's just, it's just like, you know, it's one thing to like, you know, wake up at like. Okay. Am I connected still? Yeah, um, you're good. Am I still? Okay. okay, good. So, um, it's it's like one thing to watch these performances on your laptop screen at like four a.m. and it's another thing to be able to like watch it on your TV, like on MHK World. So. It's just happy to see, okay. and I, I'm I'm glad that so many um fans were able to come out and participate in the hashtag. So, mm-hmm. yeah, very happy about that engagement. I mean, it's actually what Songs of Tokyo. It's like it's it's a show as well. Originally, it was a special to kind of promote the summer league in Tokyo, but now it's a it's a regular weekly show. Actually, kind of. <laughs> yeah, because they also have JML too as well too. By the way, which is a great show mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and actually, All my right. thoughts on the episode is that yeah, it was great. I remember when they introduced when the group introduced themselves. Ten was saying uh, in, I mean, in English, and his, and, and the actor. No, that was, was really... Yuka. That's Yuka. Oh, that was Yuka. Yuka. Oh, Yuka. Oh, Yuka. That was Ten. Sorry. Mm. Yeah, Yuka's English was really cute. <laughs> oh. Yeah. All right, then I guess if we've all finished making our comments on that, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can move on to the Senbatsu announcements then. I think that's a lot yeah. of right. we have. We'll leave oh, that, that to you, Tam. All yeah. right. So, what, like, currently, while the Songs of Tokyo 
was airing, we got the announcement for Nogizaka's 27th single. And I feel like, I don't know if I should have, like, sent it to the <laughs> chat or anything. I don't know if you, if you want to, Well, like, you can the... if you want, but you can formation. also show it to the camera if you want. Okay, I'll just do that. So, this is the formation for the single. Oh. Uh, we have another Endo Sakura center. Um, I know. Centering again after um, her debut center as um, with Yoake, which I think was the twenty fourth single. So she's back. Um, up, she's an up up and coming member for, mm-hmm. from the fourth gen, and she's been she's been like you know pretty mm-hmm. meteoric popularity and rise. So mm-hmm. I feel like this. I I I, I expected. Um, like I like one of the four members. I actually expect for the center. I expected one of the four. Um, members in the front row, which was um, Yoda, NP, Zuki, or Kaki. I expected one of those to center, and it was um, Endo Sakura. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's on one hand, um, it would have been great to see um, Dayuri in center because this would be her last single as a Nogizaka mm-hmm. 46 member. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, I think, Nogizaka is kind of following their trend where. Mm-hmm instead of giving the center of the song to the graduated graduating member they give them second row center so center? this this was kind of a, a trend that you that we've seen since oh. um I, th- I think the first time they did this was with during nanas's graduation single where they put wakatsuki oh. in the center for the second row you had this with the last single with miona centering the second row for bokuuski and Again, we have this single. We have Matsun um, centering the second row. So, on one hand, she doesn't really need the center. You know, it's too, like she's like a first gen member. Um, you know, you don't need to promote her anymore. Um, she's plenty popular. One of the yeah. most well known faces of Nagizaka. So she doesn't really need it. It would have been nice to see it. But um, would have been a double center with her and Erica Akita. Could have been that other Kragi sister singles. That would have been great. Yeah, I, I don't think that Yuki Chan's gonna do center unless it's like her grad single, unfortunately. Right, I right. The management waited too long. To, like, you know, she's she's extremely popular. I just think management waited too long to kind of give her that center push. Mm-hmm. Um, At least Ray is in the single as well. Ray is, Samia is in the single again, fellow San Franciscoan. Yeah, she's in the si- single, which I think is great. So, I, okay, I guess I could, I could kind of briefly go over the rest of the formation. Of course. Um, for so I think to the disappointment of a lot of people, um, considering you know Miona is a second generation member, and she we you know she she did work really hard to promote her fellow second gens. I think a lot of people had hope that you would see more of a second generation representation in the Senbatsu, but unfortunately the there's only one who is kind of the Senbatsu last row regular, which is Shinichi Mai. Um, awesome. I, I, I don't I don't believe she's ever left the last row, but she's been consistently in the singles just in the last row and unfortunately she's in the corner and a lot of people are disappointed about that considering um, you know, Miona kind of left on a note that I feel like was kind of, you know, giving a push to the second gen. So I think a lot of people expected um Kichan, um a lot of people were uh, hoping for Rena, Yamazaki. Yama, Yama, oh, yeah, my because, ocean, yeah. She, yeah, she's, because she's uh, been doing a lot of work recent outside of work outside of work recently. She had her TV, she had her, um, she had her own program for a bit. Now she has her radio program. So a lot of people were hopeful for her as well. Um, so a bit disappointing on that front. Um, oh, Jenna, too. Um, like, she's not in this as well, too. Jenna. Sorry? Well. Jenna is also not in the single as well. Who? Oh, Jenna. Jenna. Juna, Juna, yeah. Juna, yeah. Another another member who, you know, is, you know, a lot well loved by fans, unfortunately, still didn't make it in. Um, on the plus side, I guess we have um Higuchi Hina entering Senmatsu, which is great. Um, she's been getting a lot of she's been getting a lot of work recently. She was she's in um a, a drama with uh Kimutaku. Ooh. And she has a yeah, and she has a stage play. Um, I think about like h- hula dancers or something like that. Oh yeah, well that's Mizuki Amuchi as well too. She's in that. Play yeah, right. from AKB48. Um, oh. So that's great. Um, and then you see we ha- you see Hayakawa Seda is also in and sen- mm-hmm. en- entered Senbatsu, um, and she 
is you know she's one of the co-leads in borderless oh, and yeah. um, she's borderless had, too. and she yeah I, I she's very impressed i think her acting is probably i would yeah. say she's the best aside from um oh, the the Sucka, I think was Sucka, that was probably the top tier mm-hmm. um in that one but i think she's one i think say that as one of the standout roles in that show mm-hmm. so yeah, that's another that's another great addition and then obviously Ray and Mayutan from fourth generation they're still there but I think overall it's, it's a lot of people I think it's they say they feel like it's a bit of a safe single um in terms they didn't really shake up mm-hmm. anything the I th- I'm pretty sure the front like the Fukujin members are virtually the same from last single mm-hmm. um so yeah it's a bit of a I think a lot of people are a bit disappointed by this, but we'll see how the song turns out. It's mm-hmm. going to be a summer single, which I think we haven't had First, in a while for mm. Nagizaka. So we have 246. Well, that was in the music video collection box set. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, it's a bit, yeah. Yeah, it's from, it's mm. a bit different. So we'll, we'll see, maybe it'll be more of like Hadashi or like Girls Rule. So we'll see. Um, it's been a while that Asuka like, is not the lead member in a summer single. First time that Asuka is not the lead member in a sing in a summer single in a while. Yeah, yeah, it's another mm. good point. She, I feel like she's kind of like the safe bet for the summer. So mm. interesting. We'll see if it's gonna yeah. be a fun summer song. I do like Endo Sakura a lot, but I, I, I mean, personally, yeah. I would have liked seeing Yoda Yuki because I think. Um, no, nobody is having destruction. When she did with the <laughs> cheeks, or I think Michael dropped. Sorry. Michael dropped. Oh yeah. Uh, I guess hopefully it'll come back soon, but um, yeah, yeah, Yoda's my personal pick for would have been my personal pick for the center because I think she could have conveyed that fun summer feel after, um, like Zuki did her kind of like a more sentimental um fall or winter single. So, you so, know, it's so happening. Cool again. I don't know if anybody has any thoughts about that. Did you want to share? Oh, I don't know if about that, but it's with Sakura. And remember on Novi's like under construction when she just did with her cheeks? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was cute. Yeah. I think she uh, looks promising. We should probably, maybe the single song will be good. We'll have to wait and find out. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have too many thoughts on it just because I've kind of fallen out of the loop with Nogizaka. But, like, yeah, um, with it going to be um, Matsumura Sayuri's uh, last single in the group before she graduates. Uh, I am kind of the same. I was kind of expecting her maybe to get the center since it, since it was going to be like her last one, since I did kind of consider her being one of the more popular members of the group. Absolutely. Especially yeah. now that she's like kind of getting more into acting now and she's done a lot more acting roles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, like still ago, like uh, looking so forward to Asuka. it and looking forward to what her graduation song is going to be like moreover. True. Mm. But yeah, but two weeks ago, uh, er- Sayori and Eric were actually in an episode of Pokemon. In that episode, they were playing Pokemon. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right, that's right. All because right. they were like oh, doing the God. theme song for the show, and they were mm-hmm. uh Plusle and My Minan. I yeah, yeah. I forget I forget which was which. Like who was Plusle oh. and who was Minan? Uh, Sayori um. played Plus and um, Erica played Ma- Minan. Oh okay mm-hmm. okay. And Sayori kind of fit the character and. And the Erica was character of mine. It's just like, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I could see that both of them have really cute voices, and they're both really good actors. So I'll have to look for that maybe if I can find that like the Japanese uh, clip yeah. of it. But yeah, yeah, that's that's really cute. But yeah, like I said, looking forward to what the single is going to be like. Mm-hmm. I wonder if one of the members could play Pokemon too. Any member could play a Pokemon. <laughs> For but, me, I was kind of hoping that Kichan would be in the lineup. There. She is my um, Ocean and in <laughs> oh. Although, like, I haven't really like been paying attention to Nogizaka as much since um, Nanase graduated. Mm-hmm. Like, was 20th single, I think. 20th, yeah, 20th. So, I need to find something to get me back into Nogizaka. Well, we have fourth gens. They have potential. And third gens, too. <laughs> Especially with Out of the Blue. Great song, too. But should we but get I'm... to the lineup for Hinata Zaka 46 this single? Very... Yeah. I guess whenever this single does come out, I'll check out the songs. <clears throat> the videos. All right. 
with Nana's Chapter 40, I actually have that line up here, here as you from this. Oh, so thank you, Jerison. And this single is actually She Ho Kado. So, but this, Woo! her being the new single, finally appears that I'm thinking maybe probably they're, they're still going to make music for a long time. Cut the scene. Yeah, and also in the front, you got Now and Miku there too. And uh, oh, there's Hina and uh, oh, yeah, and oh. And at Nib Akari Nibu too. But Miles are in the group, uh, Kumi is in the back. Anything else you'll about the last two? Um I I guess I have I have a few thoughts about this one. Um they you um we have like two members coming back from hiatus, which is um Hanoka and Manamo. And unfortunately, they're both in the back row, which I, I, is a bit disappointing. Um, especially Konaka is quite popular. I don't know why they put her in the back row. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you have like you have the other members. Sorry, Mike, what are you saying to me? Yeah. That's true. Yeah, has short hair now. Random. Okay. Yeah, she just um, Mike just mentioned that like um, Manamo just came back from the hiatus recently, so yeah. it kind of makes sense for her. Yeah. Um, like not to put a strain on her, basically. Yeah, yeah. In that sense, it doesn't make sense. Though I would have, I like yeah. Konka Mike, so I would have liked to see her <laughs> more towards the front. Um, we have um, Hinano entering the second row for the first time in a single. Oh yeah, Kyoko um, Saito, true center. After that photo book she released. <laughs> yeah. And um we have this another disappointing one for me is Miho being in the second row again. Um I I think I, I honestly I feel like there's like a lot of, quite a lot of surprises in terms of who made the second row. I think, you know, Kyoko, I feel like she's getting a lot of outside jobs. So and like you know, yeah. she's doing borderless too, so I'm a bit surprised about her being in the second row, but get, though I guess she is centrist so that she she will get screen time. Mm. Mifan mm -hmm. is getting you know, she had Kakegurui, um yeah. and she had centered Azato Kawaii, so yeah. I expected her to stay in the <laughs> front row, but again, she is in the second row. Hyori is an also borderless in the second row. Miho had her um like kind of drama special with um, Maeda Gordon, who you know is a pretty popular actor. Mm. She's also in the second row. Also in the back in second row as well, Maimi. Yeah, unfortunately, but yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm quite surprised by who got moved to second row in terms of like pretty much like Kyo like Kyoko and like everyone to her left. I think it's quite surprising. Um, the front and for the front row, I'm you know it's. Pretty awesome to see Katoshi Center, hmm. um, a single. Happy aura. I mean, just, yeah, it's it's, it's just it's it's great to see a first gen finally be able to get a chance at centering a single. I mean, we we, also, we obviously had Mipan Center as at the Kawaii, which I think was great. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see them give um, Katoshi a chance. I honestly I didn't expect her to get single. I mean, to get center because I cause I don't I don't think she's you know gotten that many recent outside jobs mm -hmm. so. It's a pleasant talk show, I think, now as well, too. I think, as well. With, uh, oh, she, right, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was thinking she was going to be the lead member in this song. Well, called it. <laughs> oh, uh, but also, so, Michael, I was uh, uh, about to also with your ocean in the group, uh, Yuka, who's I was in the back row, but somehow she had a haircut, actually. She did? Yeah, based on the picture, she also changed the color of her hair, too, as well. Did she? No, I can't tell if she cut her hair, but she definitely dyed it. Yeah. Wait, wait. Oh, oh wait. Oh, now I see her. Oh, yeah, yeah it's like a lighter brown color. Oh, okay, okay. Ah, uh, okay. Mike said that in the mobile, it, it's very cool that she dyed the hair. That's hmm. cool. Okay. I like cool. it when idols dye their hair. <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah. um, Mogi does that in AKB. Uh, I guess rounding out the front row, we have um, Nao, who's getting her photo book soon. She is mm -hmm. flanking Katoshi, yeah. as well as Miku, who I believe is the lead for the her the new drama that they're doing. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, no, no. I thought it was yeah. either her or Mide yeah. that's doing yeah. the new oh, wait, drama. Duo? Oh, maybe, maybe. Oh, wait. But yeah, I remembered about that too, that it's like, I think it's going to focus on like voice acting. Yeah, yeah. And the same person that wrote made uh, Dasida from a story by Yushi Shakimoto. That's gonna be really cool. 
Yeah, begins April 28th on Hulu, by the way. We'll watch it. Oh, so we'll that's actually about. pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. April I mean, 28th, I've got it. Yeah. I think. And then the the other two is uh, Nibu, who's also yeah. going to be in that drama. And I think, I think Kina's also in the drama. Yeah, okay, so. Yeah, so. I think it's it's the um, what is it the, the rest of the um, Doremi like the um, ones who are flanking now for that one. So I think for me, I think Hina is a bit of a bit of a surprise. I mean, I like Hina a lot, but it's a bit of a surprise to have her in the front row. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nibu, I think she based on the handshake sales, she was like the number one. Um, so you know, good for her, deserved. Um, so I mean, I'll I'll be looking forward to this one. I think it's a, it's it's quite an intre- I mean, it's not my perfect senbatsu, but I mean, considering everyone's in it, that's a great plus. And mm-hmm. I think having Tatoshi Center is going to be interesting. So I'll look forward to this one. Mm-hmm. The, the, the name, the title of the name of the song is promising. It's called "You're the Best." Um, it's going to be very what? happy aura. You're the best. That's the name of the song. It's, well, that's uh, the English it's like title. Only you, it's only you yeah. win, isn't it? You win. Yeah. Oh. You win. Oh, you win. Kima, Kimishika Kaptan. Yeah, Kimishika Kaptan. Kimishika yeah. Kaptan. Only you win. Oh, okay. Which I think yeah. I think we were talking about like that sort of some like meme phrase that people do in Japan like recently. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a I think it's like a recent meme in like Japanese Twitter, um, like kind of like a meme phrase. So, uh, I I feel like it's gonna be kind of, I like. As a kawaii, like as a toy, it's kind of like it was kind of like a trendy yeah, phrase last year. It was, yeah. it was. So at that show, as a toy. So <laughs> it's kind of like, I feel like it's gonna continue with Hinata being a bit of like a trendy, hmm. um, song titles and trendy songs. I think that's gonna be kind of an interesting. I could, I could see it being a very dynamic. fun and energetic song too, especially with like Katoshi being in the center, and we know she can be very funny. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking be... forward to that. I think it'd be interesting if, like, you know, Nogi kind of has, like, their established image, and so, like, okay, Sakura's, I guess, still kind of, like, finding theirs, but, you know, if they kind of continue with Kiyaki's with any, like, strong performances, but it'd be kind of interesting to see, like, Hinata kind of being, like, the trendy ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I can, I think that'll be interesting to see from them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. it might be the summer song of uh, this year, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, well, all right. that's all the... Go ahead, Michael. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, that's so right. it's gonna... They're gonna premiere the song on Recommend on this Tuesday, so we'll hear it soon. Whoa. And then the music okay. will be released the week after that. Also, before we move on, Ruka, um, my thoughts on this lineup... I'm happy that uh, two out of my top three are in at least the first row. Oh, yeah. Mei being my Ushiman, she's in the second row. Oh. Obviously, I would have oh. liked her in the first row, but other than that, I think it's a pretty solid lineup. Um, although I would kind of would like to see more of like the more of the newer members mm-hmm. in the Senbatsu lineup. You know, like I don't really know them as much, but I would at least wish that more of the gen would it be third gen, third, third gen, members? yeah, third gen, mem- third gen members would get some more spotlight. Or as in the Kenshuses, the Kenshuses, like Haru, mm. Kina. Hey, who's your? Who were your Oshimans in the first row? Um, uh, for me, um. Other than Mei Mei, it's uh, Nibu and Katoshi, so... Oh, uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, and my Oshiman Kumi's in the back still. Right. Also at the back. So, yeah. So, oh, if you want to move on now. Yeah. Okay, get- so, yeah, I think that was the last discussion point oh, we okay. had uh, planned, and... We're almost two hours in in recording yeah. this part, so we had a fun conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, any last things, like any sort of like quick things you would like to bring up while we uh, wrap this up? Just like anything, or like just any like closing comments in general? Anything? 
Well, I guess thank you for having me join the show. It's fun to discuss yeah. Sakamichi groups and then also kind of, you know, hear about these other groups that don't follow as closely as I yeah. either mm-hmm. used to or just, you know, don't follow at all. So it's, 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 this was a, a fun discussion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was nice having you. It was nice meeting you. Yeah, thank you for coming and joining us. So, I mean, you're welcome to come back to the show at any time. Also, too. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and well, me for as well, too. I've been, I'll be putting stuff probably in the channel in the next few weeks and also probably finally do those sorts I have to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But let's hope the next few months will be great and hope things get back to, uh, uh, get get back to normal, and I mean, we're starting to see a lot of cases now. And a friendly reminder again to, it depends where you live in, stay home, wash your hands, have a social distancing, and uh, wear a mask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Are there any recommendations that you would give out, either like people to follow, for example, your social media account or anything? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that, is that to Tam? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, Tam. Uh, um, I guess if you if you like Sakura Zaka, I recommend you follow um, Saku Zaka Central. That's the, the news site that I help um, run. We basically just translate most, well, translate and kind of update the international fandom about any upcoming news regarding that regarding the group like magazine appearances and any kind of miscellaneous things and we occasionally do projects as well like we last last december we did a we did a um, fan census which yeah. i finished compiling everything this past weekend because i kind of forgot about it for a while but um yeah i did that <laughs> for, <laughs> for a few months i kind of left it on the back burner but you know I, it, the timing was was good in terms of like you know songs of tokyo so a lot of the japanese fans were actually paying attention to the the page and mm. i was you know i was able to like you know release the results in japanese so the japanese results actually got more versions than the one in english i mean what more um retweets <laughs> and likes than the ones in english which i thought was pretty funny but you know we so you know we do occasional projects like that and the hashtag project so you know do follow the account if you're interested in the group and then also I guess if you are interested in anything Sakamichi group, and occasionally I rec- I tweet about like you know other miscellaneous Japanese entertainment stuff, mostly like dramas because I like that kind of stuff. Or I mean, very I don't really tweet about anime, but you know I'm into that kind of stuff too. So I mean, the forty six groups are members in the forty six groups are in a lot of shows actually. Well, this yeah. month actually. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and do uh, also go to um the the new website Sakura Zaka one hundred one. It's a really Great website where you want to, if you're like new to Sakura Zaka for six and want to learn about them, there's an essential website for that. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot yeah, of time on that one too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I was going to ask for like Michael if he had anything, but he dropped the call. I actually had to kind of switch the screen setup on OBS so I could get you guys so we could close it out. So again, I'm so sorry for all the technical difficulties that happened during this recording. Michael keep dropping out, and then I ended up not being able to hear him halfway through. At least for me, my internet is more faster now, so I'll be dropping less now. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Do you have uh, any recommendations, Ruka? Oh, yeah, I guess to like just uh, quickly bring some stuff up. Uh, one of the K-pop group idol groups that I fall, uh, Itzy, is mm-hmm. they recently announced their comeback at the uh, end of April, like April the 30th, I believe, is when they're releasing it. So they've been like posting teases and stuff for that. So definitely looking forward to that. Uh, also, uh, one of the members of Luna, Chu. Uh, she has her own uh, solo YouTube channel where she's talked about uh, environmental oh. related stuff of like recycling and stuff like that being eco-friendly basically. And oh. they recently mm-hmm. announced a season two for it. So they just finished oh, up season one and now they're doing a season two. So looking forward to that. Amazing, she has a YouTube channel. So she's doing very well right now. She has, she has two YouTube channels actually because there's another one that's like a collaboration with like a department store in korea like chu is just a busy girl she's doing a bunch of stuff over there mm-hmm. she's been on like a lot of shows she started doing advertisements for pokari sweat you know the drink oh she's like the new that. like advert model for that in korea yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah like chu chu is very busy and luna 
We know that they're preparing for their next release. We still don't know when that is coming back or what the situation is with Hassel, whether or not she's going to be able to participate in that or not. So we're just patiently waiting for more information to come out on that when it does eventually uh, drop. Yeah, she'll be back. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. And I have a quick recommendation too. Uh, it's also the thing with, with Lyrical School. I know they were going to release the next album, Wonderland, originally about uh, three months ago, but it was delayed because of the state of emergency. And I think it's released mm-hmm. now or some will be released next week, so we'll probably listen to that. Oh, yeah. And also, mm-hmm. uh, we'll watch uh, a lot of shows this month. It's going to be busy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and AK Bingo came back. Bingo. That's right. AK Bingo Neo happened, and then they announced they're doing another one later in the summer. So definitely looking forward to that. I have to turn in by the card game, the AKB for Uno game. Mm. I play it. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully Neon's in it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'd say that wraps it up for this discussion video. Again, really happy to have Tam here as a guest, being able to talk with her. And again, despite the technical difficulties going on, it was nice being able for all of us to talk about all this stuff. Yeah. One second. Can I give my recommendations? Go ahead. Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go on. Okay. So, um, for Nagoya wise, because you know, I always give recommendations for Nagoya. He's an expert. Um, so recently, uh, BSJ has been uploading, um, more, uh, videos to their YouTube, uh, Arisa has been doing, like, a video series, like, on, like, she's, like, beer, because she loves beer, mm-hmm. on, like, her YouTube series, just doing little two-minute videos, um, and then also, um, there is a new group that I'm going to be looking forward to, um, Kitsuji Sankakuke, um, that group is being produced by, um, um, one of the groups that I um was following in Nagoya, Ro Edelstein, and remember them? Ruka? Yeah, yeah, I do. So after Ro Edelstein and uh disbanded, um, the producer of that group is now making a new group. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, so oh, okay. if people can go follow them on Twitter, uh, please. Um, basically, their style of music is um mentalism idol rock <laughs> that's interesting mentalism oh mentalism Mental adolescence rock <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that is a lot of buzzwords in there but no that's their <laughs> i guess music genre that they're getting into so okay. if you can go please go check them out on twitter um and then also something uh, from Miyawaki Sakura, she finally uploading oh, yeah. videos again. That's right! Of yeah, exactly. On her YouTube channel yeah. of Little Nightmares 2. So, Long if you video. people are interested in watching that, please go to her channel and yeah. watch her. Yeah, I recently I saw the video she posted where she's playing Fall Guys, and it's just really cute and really fun watching her getting frustrated. Mm. Yeah, and more and members there are that. subs mm. from uh, mm. the community. They worked really hard to solve that. Yeah. So those are my recommendations. Uh-huh. Now we can go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. that. This gave it too long. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that'll do it for this discussion video. We're wrapping up here now. So hope that you guys all like this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like. Comment down below some of your thoughts on some of the stuff that we talked about here or anything else that you would like to bring up as well. Uh, Subscribe to our channel and also check out our second channel for our reaction content. And we'll see you guys in the next video whenever we make it. So until then, bye-bye. Bye-bye.